Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams, and in this After Effects tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make grids of repeated shapes in Adobe After Effects. There are many ways to do this, but I'm interested in using the repeater inside of shape layers. Certainly, there are effects that can help us make grids. Maybe this one called Grid, or particle systems like Trap Code Form or Plexus, maybe Motion Tile or Repetile, many, many scripts, plugins, etc., etc. They all have their place, depending on the project at hand. But I want to use the flexibility and cleanliness of shape layers. They're part of vanilla, just out of the box After Effects already, and there's a lot we can do with them. We'll make some grids animate on, animate off, change size, density, aspect ratio, and then we'll do some wacky stuff too. So if any of those aspects sound like a thing you want to learn, keep on watching. If you get stuck, the file we create during this tutorial is going to be available using the link in the cards or in the description. And please ask any question you have in the comments and I'll try to get you through. I'm Evan Abrams and this is how to create repeater grids in Adobe After Effects. We've got After Effects open. Let's make a grid of shapes and then we'll move on to make a grid of lines like some graph paper. Start by making whatever shapes you're going to make into this array. I'm just going to use circles. So I'm double clicking on the ellipse tool up here with nothing selected, which creates a shape layer. And layers have a transform. You've got anchor point, position, all this stuff. And then for shape layers, you have contents. And then within the contents, we now have a group. And in that, it has its own transform. And then we've got the ellipse path, which is the information about that ellipse, which I'm going to use to make this quite a bit smaller. It has a stroke, which we don't need, so I'm going to delete it. And we have a fill, which I do want so that we can actually see something here. So in order to repeat this, we need to add a repeater. Now we've covered repeating a repeater a long time ago, so I'm sure no one remembers that. But all you have to do is type in the number of copies you want. And then if you want to offset those copies, and then this is the important vital part of the repeater. How is each new instance different? By default, each one is just moved by 100 pixels to the right. OK, that's all right. That's getting us close to the grid. But you can also do things like scaling which, as you can see, each neighbor is being scaled again and again, just like each neighbor is being pushed on their position again and again. So you end up with this cascade of transformations going through all of these repeated elements, and repeaters are always repeating whatever is above them. So that's important to remember as well. So we've got our first repeater. Let's go ahead and duplicate it, giving us repeater two. And then we go to the transform repeater to set the position to 0, 100. So our first repeater is taking our original and making a line of dots. And then the second repeater is taking that line of dots and repeating it again and again and again until we end up with a grid. Pretty easy stuff, I think. It's important to remember that all of these instances are now referencing this original. So if we were to animate anything about this original or if we were to put in groups of more things above the repeaters, that would just be repeated again and again and again all the way down the line. And this is wonderful for creating an array of dots, but how would we go about creating, say, some graph paper? Well, we would start with a line instead. And here we have this line, and it is in the middle center of its groups. And we are going to go in here, we're going to go into that shape, and we're going to add a repeater to this. So let's make a vertical array. So maybe 12 copies, and this needs to be 0, comma, I don't know, maybe 60, perhaps. So now we have this arrangement of lines. Now, to make graph paper, we don't need this array to go horizontally and vertically because we've just drawn a line. I want to array this thing that I've created, this bank of lines. I want that to rotate around. So I'm going to add a different repeater, a new repeater, and I'm going to say four copies because I need one copy for down and left and up and right. Now we're going to transform that and we'll be transforming that not by its position, but instead by its rotation, 90 degrees each time. And would you look at that? We've got this grid. And you can see we can kind of dial back so you can see what's going on. Oh, you can make a grid of triangles. That's fun. But now we have this grid. And remember, the originals, the original things being repeated around are an array that starts in the middle and goes in one direction. That'll be important when we start animating it. But if you just need to make some interesting grid backgrounds, you've already nailed it. So here's an example where we're animating on using scale. We're causing this lovely kind of cascade out from the middle. How do we set this kind of thing up? Well, 
We've already created a grid, just like we did in the, in the previous example, and now we're animating some of its properties. And we've changed it around a little bit. We've placed our path inside its own group. And like we said, repeaters always repeat everything above them. So even though this path is in a group and we're using that group's scale transformation to make this one line get larger and smaller, that is all still being repeated by the repeater that is below it. So if we weren't also animating something about this first repeater, the this, this scale and position, which I'll remove now, it would just look like this. This very boring, bland, unpleasant. But when we animate the scale of the repeater as well, say from zero, so if it's at zero, then all of the subsequent iterations are all 0% of the original, and we're animating it up to 100% of the original, you would end up with something like this, where each of the iterations is scaling up as the original is also scaling up, and we get this interesting kind of starburst little look. And then we can play around by easing those keyframes as well, or maybe offsetting them a little bit, so we can end up with all kinds of nuanced and interesting ways that can look. And then I'm just going ahead and keyframing the position here. And the position of this transform colon repeater makes things appear to zoom in and out a little bit. But really, we're just adjusting the spacing between these things. So maybe we want to be zooming in while this happens. We can make that happen. So we'll just zoom. Ooh, that's very interesting. And so by combining animating the original and animating properties of the repeater, because they're both dealing with scale, we get this interesting kind of scale on. We could also use the scale to make things go away. So we've got this grid and we want the lines to thicken up until the entire background becomes the color of those lines. Now, of course, like we talked about, we could just scale up the individual elements. You know, that would get us where we want to go. They can thicken up and fill this whole thing in. But by also altering the scale of the repeater, they're both scaling up on the Y axis. We end up with this kind of cascade as what the repeater is doing to each instance is altering over time. We end up with this cascade. So that is one of the key elements that you want to bring in when you're trying to animate these things on and off is how can I use the transform of the repeater in conjunction with something I'm animating but the original to cause this kind of cascading. Finally, there's a really lovely thing about repeaters that we are able to deal with the start and end opacity of things they repeat, which allows us to do something like this, where we have all of the dots fade off in a way that's a little bit more nuanced than if we were to say use a mask to just mask this thing off. And you could have it go horizontally or vertically or up into the corner. And this works by going up into the corner because, as we said when we were setting this up, they all reference this first dot. And so as we alter the starting and ending opacities in this way that the end opacity is going down to zero and then the starting opacity begins going down to zero as well, those two phases overlap each other. And then we end up with this nice soft cascade from one corner to the other. And it's going from one corner to the other because we're doing this to both the horizontal and the vertical repeaters of our grid. So those are some simple ways that you can animate these grids on and off. Now, I said in the intro that we would get into some wacky stuff as well. Here is some truly strange stuff. Of course, by animating the size of the original, we're able to create this kind of dot that gets larger and then smaller. We're able to expand the array out by keyframing that positional offset, that transform repeater positional offset. So it's getting larger out like so. And then of course the vertical, we can keyframe that from zero up to its full grid. But then if we start messing around with things like the scale, the position of that first repeater and the scale and position rotation and start opacity of the second repeater, we start to be able to bend and warp this array to appear to be kind of three dimensional a little bit by making things smaller and lighter in the background or, you know, twisting and warping this stuff around. 
This is sort of the fun that you can have with these repeater arrays that by twisting and bending their values, you can end up with these really interesting, almost 3D shapes. Granted, you can do this kind of thing using 3D particle systems and, and twisting them, but this is something that's available right now in everybody's After Effects, and you don't need to download or pay for anything else to play around with it. And it can help to really open up some different creative possibilities using repeater arrays. We could dive forever into the minutia of all these things. What I recommend you do is simply create a grid that is horizontal and vertical, and then just start tweaking all of the values and seeing what happens slowly as you mess with one value just a little bit, and then start messing with another of the values just a little bit, just to see what happens as you tweak those values so that you can really appreciate how they change one at a time. Going through that exercise, I think will will really help open up what is happening with the repeater. All right, that's it, that's all. Thank you so much for watching. If you had trouble making any of that happen, please get at me in the comments. And if you'd like to download the project file for this thing, it's available in the cards or in the description. If you make something new with this knowledge, I would love to see it. Tweet your cool gifs and gifs at EC Abrams on Twitter or tag EC Abrams on Instagram. I don't know how that platform works, but I'm learning new things all the time. If you like learning this stuff, motion design, visual effects, after effects, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you can see the new tutorials when they come up. I'm planning to get one of those out every week here in 2020, so don't miss them. And our live show will be back up very soon, every Friday, and there are going to be many other series and projects on this channel. I'm excited to make them, and I'm excited for you to see them. Thanks again for watching and spending some time with me here on the EC Abrams channel, and I'll see you around the internet.